behind us right now. These fashion colors are all the rage right now, and it used to be that trends started in New York and LA, yeah. and then trickled into Chicago later. By the time all of the colors are sick of doing ombres, that's when your clients are finally asking for it. So with fashion colors like this, I mean, how can colors really take advantage of education so they can yeah. jump on a trend while it's happening because Instagram has made all of these trends more accessible? It's true. You know, I think InstaTrend, everything is there at your fingertips. Your clients live and breathe it. We know that it's right there for us. I think as the word is trend, there's trend translation, right? Trends translation into your marketplace. So, you know, we got hit a few years ago. Everything was ombre, right? Ombre. And I think it became so much ombre that we had to question, was it regrowth or was it fresh? You know, depending on how it was done. And there were multiple methods to it, but things then went further at painting and balayage, but was it really traditional balayage? It's not that ombre wasn't in a marketplace. Maybe it was the, the degree of contrast that lived within the ombre, right? We got to see it, that it went from a very deep three or four level to something that was more of a 9-10 in the melt, and sometimes it was really horizontal in the weight. Maybe what we need to do is not take it so contrasted. Maybe it needed to go from, if it started at a three, four, maybe it only needed to live in the light of maybe a five or a six. You know, it's still ombre. Maybe it's degrees that it's a new face framing. Maybe it was something that it was a painting versus something so hardcore. You know, we live in Los Angeles, but you know, before Christopher and I met, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So as a fashion capital, it's not. not so much. But, you know, I still did my painting. I did everything. And you made your trend translation to accommodate it. You know, the world that we're living right now of this, I'm a mermaid, I'm a unicorn, I'm a fairy. I mean, whatever. I'm a colorist and I'm gonna do it my way. What's cool about it is the world of pures and pastels, it's, you know, it's a mega trend. Right? Mega trends die off, but I could still do it in my own way, and it doesn't have to be just a head of bright pink. Maybe I'm going to have flickers through it. I use pale pastel. I, we have wonderful models in the back with Sherton and Mia that you can see them, but I like to take that as an overlay of pale pink, that it just puts a nuance to it in the right light, but otherwise you would never see it as pink. You know, so you could still use trend and translate it to whatever you want to do. So Chris, you, you've taught classes all over the world. You've been in this industry for a long time. I'm interested to hear how the world of hair color has changed over time in the industry. And then also what are some of the common questions that you get in your, in your classroom? Well, I, I really think that um, color's color. It, you know, it, it, color really doesn't change, but the trends and the fashions change. What I'm enjoying at the moment is seeing all the bright, strong colors because the original, uh, the, the, the birth of the very bright, kind of strong, direct dyes was the punky days. And there's probably not that many people in the audience that can remember the punky days. Let's see a show of hands, those that can remember. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> First yeah. round punk. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's good. Well, I'm not my own with it, which is good. So we know what we're talking about. But that was done in, in a kind of a very aggressive, kind of like um, a street. You know, they, they wanted to kind of show their own identity by being this rebellious kind of like bright colored mohawks, shaved sides. But if you think about it, the shaven sides, the bright colors has come back, but the way they've come back in the cycle of fashion is a, a more refined version. I think as colorists, what it's our duty and our job to do is like when someone comes in and wants something that's strong and vibrant, or you recognize in that character that this is a person I could really kind of go to town with. You know, this is someone that I could really kind of create a piece of art with. It's giving ourselves as hairdressers that time to do it because a lot of time in our daily basis we haven't really got time to really do something ultra creative so i think one of the things in fashion now is like okay it's fine putting on a darker direct dye uh, you know over a pre-lined head of hair at the scalp something middle and then something lighter on the ends so you have that kind of bleed through it's easy it's quick and i really get it but i mean i, I just kind of say as someone who really is driven by art and I love and I'm passionate about hair and hair color particularly, is like if you ever get that opportunity where that client's sitting there or someone you even meet out, it could be at Starbucks even, and you recognize that that person is experimental and that really could be someone who is your, your card to the rest of the world, that, that they can showcase your work, 
give yourself the time. It's like giving yourself a gift, you know? Give yourself the time at some point. Book out a space, after work, whatever it might be, and get that client to come in because, you know, she may be behind Starbucks, but think about how many people a girl behind Starbucks sees every day. And if you have time to give yourself that piece of work, that piece of art that you can actually spend time with, and what I'm gonna ask, this is really kind of like, again, it's from the heart and I'm passionate about this, is if you can promise me you'll do that, you'll keep your eye open for that one person who you can just really go to town and do some color blending, do some color melting, place color in a way that is unexpected. Take some inspiration from something like a tropical flower or from you know beautiful feathers of the tropical birds that you see and blend the colors together that way unexpectedly. That one person that's then out on the street you give them a ton of your cards and it'll be the best advertisement you'll ever have. Definitely. definitely. It really, really will. Like and a walking and, billboard. And, and more That's importantly, right. I have to kind of say this as one final thing, it will also bring us back to who we started off being. Because if you remember that first day at beauty school when we walked in and we're going to conquer the world, we're going to be, we're going to show them what we're made of because we're artistic and we're creative. And then you can start getting into the kind of the aspect of technical and having to learn all about the chemistry. And, and all of a sudden there's rules and regulations that you didn't realize and that little kid isn't there anymore. Right. So yeah. giving yourself a chance to be that is the best gift ever. So can I get a promise from everybody in the room that if you get that opportunity, you'll take it, yeah? Woo! Yeah?